Today we're going to talk about upping your game, being professional in the workplace. So when you hear the word etiquette, what do you think of? Perhaps you think about something like this. Etiquette is something we think about for formal occasions like weddings or addressing graduation invitations just so. But etiquette is about much more than that. It's the rules of behavior, knowing how to you are expected to behave, even if no one actually tells you, even if it's not written down. But there's one lady who famously wrote down the rules of engagement for social behavior, and her name was Emily Post. Um, and a lot of people think of her as a really stuffy person. As you can see from the picture, she's rather affluent and seems important. But she said some really important things about social behavior. She said, manners are a sensitive awareness of the feelings of others. And if you have that awareness, you have good manners, no matter what fork you use. Her intention was to teach people who were up and coming in society and hadn't been raised in all the right homes and learned how to use the right fork and so forth, to know how to behave in situations that were unfamiliar to them. And so by writing those things down in a book, she made them available to everyone. She was, uh, everything uh, that you don't think of as an uppity person, she really wanted to make it clear so that everybody knew how to behave in certain situations. So etiquette is designed to smooth social relations because it takes the guesswork out of expectations. It's like the oils and the gear that help everything work. Etiquette is gonna be slightly different depending on where you are and who you're interacting with. It is the customary code of polite behavior in society or among members of a particular profession or group. What's considered appropriate varies in different places. You may bow if you're in Japan. 50 years ago, you might have lifted your hat to a woman. Uh, if you are familiar with sort of European roles, uh, rules of behavior, you know that the, the kiss on the cheek, on either cheek is a very appropriate thing to do. These are things that we don't think about doing in America right now. But you should know that there's a code of behavior, whether it's written down or not, that is expected in the work environment. And that's what we call professionalism. It's the social code, the etiquette applied in a professional situation like the workplace. The first step of being professional is to notice what is uh, happening around you? How are others acting? What can you tell from their behavior about what's appropriate in this particular place and time? So before you have a chance to really observe how people are acting, you need to go with what you think works for every situation. And so that's what we're going to talk about today, the basics that are always appropriate in every professional workplace situation. But err on the side of being too polite, too uh, careful, too respectful, uh, because first impressions are really, really powerful. The first thing you want to do is start with being on time. And this begins before you are even hired. You want to be on time, especially for something like an interview. If you aren't there, you can't do your job well. And if you're not there, you're going to make a bad impression on the people that are talking to you. And if you have to be late or you have to be absent for whatever reason, always call and let someone know. It's customary in professional settings to offer a handshake. Now, in the COVID world, that may be changing, but for right now, know that that's expected. Um, it is the most universally accepted greeting in the Western world, and it goes way back to ancient times. You can see this um, Syrian relief carving here that I've included on this slide of people showing a handshake uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Uh, in the battlefield, it used to be a way of saying, look, I don't have anything up my sleeve. I don't have a knife or a weapon up there that I'm going to try to kill you. So it's a gesture of friendliness and peace and openness to conversation. Make eye contact. When you don't look someone in the eye, it makes it look like you're being shifty or that you have something to hide. Uh, don't stare someone down in a threatening way, but Look them in the eye when you are speaking with them. Address others appropriately. 
use their professional title like Mr. or Ms., Doctor or Professor or Sergeant. And if you're not sure what to call someone, always use the most formal title that's available to you. Wait for them to ask you to call, the, uh, call them by their first name. Don't make assumptions. Dress appropriately. That doesn't mean a suit and tie for every situation. And if you're driving a forklift, you don't want to wear a suit and tie. That wouldn't be appropriate at all. But look around you, check the uh, manual if there is one for your work situation to see what's expected. You may have a uniform to wear, um, but wear what's appropriate for the situation you find yourself in. Don't interrupt others. Let them finish what they have to say. And this is true, especially when you're uh, interacting with your supervisors or other superiors. You want to let them have their say. Don't assume you know what they're going to say and don't get too impatient trying to get them to hurry up with what they have to say. That's always rude. Use your lessons that you learned in kindergarten, the please and thank you and you're welcome. These things are never out of place and they never grow out of style. Um, one of the things that you can do to set yourself apart, for instance, when you go for a job interview, is to write a thank you note after the interview. Uh, that is considered the very highest standard of good manners, and handwritten is best. In all your written communication, always be respectful. Know that email is the preferred uh, means of communication in the workplace, not texting. And that when you are communicating through email, with, especially with your superiors, you want to be more formal rather than less formal. Make it look like an old fashioned letter with the dear sir or the dear Tom or whatever at the top and sign it sincerely at the bottom. Um, make sure that you use all your good grammar with capital letters and periods in the right places and all those good things to make you look really professional in the work setting. This is so important that we're gonna spend a whole other lesson talking about written communi communication. And as far as relating to others is concerned, you wanna be really, really careful with who you talk to and what you say, uh, because things can get back to you. Avoid workplace gossip. Once you have a job, this is a great way to de demonstrate how professional you are. Um, you have to make up your mind how you're going to act in certain situations before they come up. Because if you wait until you're standing around with a group of people who are gossiping to make a decision about whether you want to join in, uh, you're going to be tempted to say some things that you probably shouldn't. So don't badmouth others. It actually makes you look bad when you badmouth others. Um, and a lot of times it gets back to you. It's the kind of behavior that sort of spoils the work environment for everyone. If you're that discontented person who's always griping and complaining about things and complaining about people, other folks won't want to be around you, including your boss. And it, you'll be the first one on the chopping block when cuts have to be made at work. Never lose your cool at work. And we all know that we've been in, if you've been in the work world before, you know that there are going to be situations that come up that are going to make you really, really angry. And it's easy to lose your temper, but that's the quickest way to lose your paycheck, too. So don't lose your uh, cool at work. You can find yourself in jail or with charges against you um, and in a whole lot more hot water than just losing your job. Use good phone etiquette as well. Certain things are not appropriate in the work situation. You don't want to take a call or look down at your phone in the middle of a meeting or while you're in the middle of a conversation with someone. That is the rudest thing that you can do. Also, if you are in a place where you have a shared work environment, you don't want to talk loudly and at length in front of other people. Um, if you're operating a forklift, you don't want to use your phone at all. In fact, some businesses will require you to leave your phone locked away in a locker. Respect the cultural differences of others. Not everyone has the same values that you do. Not everyone has the same habits or dress or customs that you do. And part of being professional is to respect those differences in the workplace. 
be prepared. If someone's expecting you to accomplish a task or be prepared to present something or have your paperwork in order, do all of those things as they are expected. That is the best way to earn respect in the workplace is to be prepared and do what you've been asked to do. Keep your work area tidy. Not only is this a um, way of respecting your coworkers, but especially in certain fields, it's a, it's a hazard to leave a workplace messy or uh, out of order. Um, things can get really, really dangerous really quickly if you don't keep your area safe and tidy and clean. Other people typically have to use the same workspace that you do. For instance, if you're driving a forklift and you may work the morning shift, someone else is working the afternoon or the evening shift, and if you've left your gooey fingerprint uh, stickiness on the, the controls, that's going to be really nasty for somebody else. So clean up after yourself. And finally, don't be this guy. We've all been in a situation where someone has brought smelly, smelly food into the workplace and left nasty junk all in the, the uh, kitchen area or in the microwave. And it's just an inconvenient, rude thing for other people. And you know what? Even if you do all the other things in your job right, if you're that guy who's constantly leaving a mess behind them, that causes other folks to not think very highly of you. So remember that good manners can open doors that even the best education cannot. Um, even if you've got all the credentials and have all the right forms and certificates and have been trained to do a job well, if you are not able to act professionally and do the things that are expected of you in the workplace, then uh, you're going to run into roadblocks. So. Get out there and be great. Be your best you and let everyone that you encounter in the workplace see the best version of you that you can be.